Hey, welcome to the Basics with Beth program, and I'm so glad you have tuned in today because we are having a lot of fun getting into God's Word and talking about a really important subject we're calling Grace for the Pace. And what that's all about is this reality. We all live really busy lives, don't we? I mean, a lot of pressures, a lot of demands, a lot of need to keep up technologically, to keep up with kids, to keep up with all the changes happening in our culture. And so we need grace to keep up with the pace. In today's uh, episode, we're going to talk about battery life. How many times have you been searching for an outlet? Whether you've been in a coffee shop, an airport, the mall, a restaurant. I mean, how many bizarre places have you been where you were in search of the outlet and you found it? You know, it was in the most remote, random place behind the jukebox or, you know, around the corner, but you found an outlet. Why? Because when your phone is on low battery, how many of us would agree that is not a happy thought? When our phone, I'm looking at my battery now, I'm about a quarter. I, I have to get charging this phone here pretty soon because to have our cell phones, have our mobile phones run out of battery, that's a bad thing. And we are like, we're like ninjas, aren't we? When it comes to making sure these things are charged, what do we do? Okay, here's what we do. We carry a backup battery. I gotta make sure this one's charged. I got my backup battery. And then I've got all my little accessory cords because you know these phone companies like to change the inputs so that we can't use the one we use for the last battery charger. So I've got all these extra little battery accessories. And then I've got my charging cord with me at all times. I will take my charging cord, my cell phone, and my lipstick, and then I can go anywhere. Then we have the mother of all batteries. <laughs> this thing, I think this gives me like five or six full charges of like my phone battery. So this is always with me too. It's always in my briefcase. This and this in my purse, plus my phone's got a full charge, plus all my accessories. Why? Because it's critical, isn't it? Like we always are making sure we've got the gear to have our phones charged. We do not want our phones to run out of battery. And if it's so important and we are like ninjas, we are on it to make sure these things stay charged up, how much more important is it that we keep our own spirits, our own hearts charged up? And we don't allow ourselves to get a low battery spiritually. And thankfully, that's where grace for the pace comes in and God wants to energize us and get those batteries charged up. Now, how does he do it? Let's take a look at really practically, how does he do it? And we're gonna see here in Psalm four verse one and among some other verses a key word and we're going to spend some time talking about it there's this key word called enlarged god wants to enlarge us now the thing about it is this is not always an easy process when we talk about grace for the pace and we talk about you know god wants to help us and all of these things it is true he does but sometimes he takes us through a process that is not easy but it is enlarging us and it is actually enabling us to run faster, to run farther, to have more grace for even a faster pace or a longer pace. But there's a process of enlargement that happens and that's gonna be our focus today, charging up those batteries so they go longer, okay? So Psalm four, verse one, the psalmist said, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness, uprightness, justice, and right standing with you. You have freed me when I was hemmed in and enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Uh, let me read you another one. You guys know this verse in um, Isaiah. He says this encouragement to the Israelites and to us, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. And we love this verse. I think a lot of us love this verse. Yes, enlarge the place of our tents. Yes, spare not, lengthen your cords. You will expand. We love growth. We love uh, movement. We love momentum. We love, you know, this idea of enlargement and expanding and that's awesome and we should love it. But the part we forget, <laughs> this is the part we forget, then in order for that expansion or that enlargement to happen, we have to be, stay with me, stay with me, stretched. We have to be stretched. The thing that enlarges our capacity is a stretching. And so sometimes the very answer to our prayer you know, we're not expecting this, but the very answer to the prayer, God enlarge me, is that God begins to stretch us. He begins to allow us to be in positions and in situations that are stretching. 
And sometimes we can feel that feeling like I'm being so stretched, I want to quit. But it's a good thing because if you allow that process to happen, give it some time, there will come a time you'll look back and go, man, oh man, was that a stretching time? I didn't think I was going to survive. But now look at my capacity now. Look how God has enlarged my capacity. I can do more, run farther, go faster, all because I allowed the process to happen. So uh, let me share a couple of thoughts here on, a, on a several books and we'll look at, we'll look at some more verses. <clears throat> but there's a great book. It's an older book now, but it's, it's kind of a classic in a way by Richard Swenson. And it's a book called Margin, Restoring Emotional, Physical, Financial, and Time Reserves to Overloaded Lives. And it's such a great read. It's still relevant. It's still a great read. And the reason it's so good is he, and he talks about, we live in a world where people have no margin. Well, we know that's true financially. We know financially people have no margin. They have no savings, no reserves. I mean, obviously some people do, but a lot of people do not. And so they are strapped. They are in debt. They are, they are living not paycheck to paycheck. They are living credit card to credit card. You know, it's, it's, we are way overextended. Well, it's true financially, but it's also true for a lot of people emotionally. I would love to feel bad about your situation, but I have no emotional quotient for that. I only have enough emotions to manage my own crazy life. People are like that when it comes to relationships. I'd love to have some friends, but I've got no time for friends. I have no margin in my schedule to go do anything fun with friends. Some of you single people, you need to think about this. You've got no margin for a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You're working so hard and you're so busy with everything else. What if the Lord wanted to bring somebody into your life? Well, you've got to find some margin in your life relationally, spiritually. What about the margin, you know, in our walk with God? Lord, I'd love to spend time with you. I'd love to pray for the world. <laughs> people, I've got no time. I've, I, every waking minute is called for. And I know, I mean, I get it. Sometimes in seasons of life, you feel that way, don't you? I know when our kids were little, man, I told you already, but when our kids were little, four preschoolers, we were pioneering a church. That was a season. It felt like a very little margin. We had a little, very little. And I remember that season just thinking, Lord, I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other and I'm going to cry out for grace. That's all I know to do. Grace, grace, God's grace. God, your grace for the pace is enough. Well, there are seasons like that and that's what you do. You call out for grace. But then in other seasons, it's time to build your reserves. It is time to get more margin spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially, right? In every way, get some more margin in your life. And grace helps us to do that. This is this process of enlarging. God allows us to be stretched in those seasons of no margin so that we can look back and go, ah, okay, now I can do it. Now I've got that experience under my belt. Now I know some strategies and ways to do things and there's more margin to do it. He gives a great illustration and I wanna share this with you because I think it just really paints the picture. In his book, Margin, he talks about when you have a glass of water and when you take some salt and you begin to pour in the salt, okay? So I'm gonna pour in the salt, right? And then I'll take a spoon and I would begin to stir. And you know what? If I stir it long enough, this salt will dissolve. And I won't take time to do it because it's loud and it'll take a while, okay? Then I'll put in some more salt. It dissolved, so that's good. Then I'll put in some more salt. This is our lives. We just keep pouring salt into the containers of our lives, our busy lives. We take on another responsibility, another, volunteer position at school, another kids in sports, got to mow the lawn today, more bills to pay. And I just keep stirring because I'm capable. I can do it. God, you can help me. We can do this. I stir, I stir, I stir. And lo and behold, look, it dissolves. Awesome. And then I pour in some more salt and that's more activity, more stuff, more pressure, more stress, more tribulations. Jesus said we would have, right? more busyness, more overload, and I stir, and I stir, and I stir. And you know what? Normally in my life, I can keep up. Normally in my life, I can have all the irons in the fire. I can spin all the plates. I can juggle all the balls and nothing drops, nothing breaks. I can do it normally until I reach my breaking point, until my battery's too low, until I reach a point that would be called saturation. Now I can't dissolve the salt. It's not dissolving. Why? Because the water is saturated. There's nowhere for it to dissolve. It, it's, it's saturated. And that is our lives, isn't it? So many times our lives get saturated. I have no room for anything else. I have no margin, no spiritual quotient, no emotional quotient, no time for friends and you know, all the things I've mentioned. 
Okay, so then what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Stop living? What are you supposed to do? Quit your job? Quit taking care of your kids? No, we can't do that, can we? We still have busy lives. So I can't stop pouring in the salt. For a lot of us, that's just not an option. I mean, there might be a few things you can cut out. Okay, I can do less salt. There might be a few activities and things you can cut out. But for a lot of people, there's not a lot you can cut out. So if I can't stop the salt from going into the container, what do I have to do? I got to get a bigger container. I've got to get a bigger jar so that it can hold more water and more salt and it dissolves. This is that process of enlargement. What the Lord does for us is he doesn't say, oh, poor baby, let's stop, let's stop having tribulations in life. <laughs> not an option. He says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge you. I'm going to help you get a bigger container a bigger capacity and it'll be through a stretching process and you're going to feel a little pain in that process. You're going to think, oh man, it went, it, it got worse, Lord, it feels worse, but it's not really worse. You're just in the process. It's going to be better. And then you'll be able to stir and put in more salt and you're going to look back and go, I can do more now than I could have done three years ago. And I thought I was taxed three years ago. I'll never forget. Okay. My husband and I, as is, is, I've told you, we passed our church, pioneered a church back in 1991. And with five adults and four kids, I was pregnant. The other lady that helped us was pregnant. So we knew the church was growing in about nine months. We were going to have two more new members. And lo and behold, it did grow. And over the years it grew. And so our church was probably at this point, I think we were eight years old as a church. Okay. And at that time we had around 500 people in the church and we were pedaling as fast as we could. We were raising these preschoolers, doing the church. We were just every waking minute was called for. We were pedaling as fast as we could. I, there was nothing else we could do. Like we couldn't think of anything else to do to keep up or to help the church grow or to, you know, minister to the people. I mean, it was like we were completely pretty much at the end of margin and working as hard as we could. And I remember, I distinctly remember, we had just built a new building. So we were moving into our brand new church building. And I distinctly remember going into my new office, sitting on the floor and just saying, God, I don't think we can do this. I don't know what we signed up for here. I don't think we can do this. I don't know how people pastor a church of a thousand. I don't know how people pastor a church of 2000 because dear Lord, I can barely handle 500. Well, but see, we knew God had put a vision in our heart. We knew God wanted us to have a church of several thousand. We knew in our community, which is not that large, but we still knew God wanted to have a mega church in our community to reach more people. And I was thinking in that season, we can't do it. So then the Lord didn't say, oh, you're right. Oh, poor thing. I know we won't reach more people. <laughs> Don't you wish he'd do that sometimes? <laughs> he's very compassionate and he's very empathetic, but you know, he's not going to let you back down on what he's put in your heart to do. So what did he do? I said, God help me. And you know what he did in this brand new building? Can you imagine God began to stretch us? He began to stretch us like crazy. And where I thought I had no margin, now I had even less. But it was the most difficult and yet the best season of our lives because both my husband and I were stretched in the best way and we had to learn new things and we had to manage new teams and we had to develop new leaders and we had to think new ways. And we had to go from a mom-pa mindset of a church of 500 to thinking a little bit bigger about how would we pastor a larger church and still take care of the sheep while reaching new people. So it's a great stretching process, difficult, but a great stretching, stretching process. And what happened? Our capacity enlarged. And so that's what I'm saying. God will do that for you, whatever your particular reference points are. He'll do that for you, but just know you might feel stretched at first. And I know I am preaching to the choir on this. Those of you ladies out there, you've had babies. You totally get this topic, right? You totally get that when you have that baby, God has designed our bodies to enlarge <laughs> this way. And then also when you have the baby, you have to deliver a baby. And the whole thing is a stretching process. I mean, no wonder they call them stretch marks. Well, this is happening for us. Sorry. This is happening for us spiritually. We get stretch marks in the process of God enlarging us, but man, they're the best. And by God's grace, we can keep up with the pace. And all the people said, woo woo. And all the mothers out there said, preach it sister. Okay. Let's look at another verse here. Let's look at second Samuel 22, 37. We see the similar concept. Lord, you enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. Not only does he enlarge us, but you know, he enlarges things around us as well, thankfully. Everything keeps in step. And then, hold that thought, then let's go over to um, 
to First Chronicles 4.10. I love this. You guys have heard this prayer before. It's very well known, but it's such, such a good one. And maybe you've prayed it before. This is the prayer of Jabez. First Chronicles 4 verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. What a great prayer. And enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him that which he requested. Well, there's a very well-known book written about the prayer of Jabez. And if you've ever read much about this, you know, this was an incredible prayer by an honorable guy whose name means sorrow, as it turns out. And he said, Lord, I'm praying this, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory. He wants to be enlarged. He wants his capacity, his influence, his territory enlarged. He wants God's hand of favor with him, and he doesn't want evil to come upon him, obviously, nor does he want to cause anybody else pain. And the cool thing is God granted him the request. How amazing is that? So I wonder for Jabez, well, in fact, I'm certain for Jabez, it wasn't a cakewalk. God did answer the prayer, didn't he? But it wasn't a cakewalk. In other words, he had to go through that stretching process to have his territory enlarged and all of the things he requested. So when you and I pray big prayers, and we should, I hope you are, you should definitely pray big prayers. And when we do, then we should also at least be mindful and not be surprised when God grants us our request. And we sort of go into a stretching season. We sort of start to feel that, you know, whoa, Lord, you are enlarging me. I thought maybe you just go poof, like the Tinkerbell does. I just thought you'd go poof. There you go, my child. You are blessed. You are enlarged. But that's not how it works, right? Y'all get that, don't you? Now, let me give you an example, another one, because I just want you to help see the picture here. The idea of blowing up a balloon. All right, now, I've not blown up this balloon. As you can see, it's, it is, you know, brand new. And I think blowing up a balloon is hard. I'm gonna try and do it live right here on TV. And the reason it's hard is because it's never been stretched. So I, sometimes it hurts in the back of your jaw, at least it does me, it kind of hurts right back here. So let's see if we can do it, okay? Now I think the smaller balloons are a little harder, but this one's sort of big, let's see. Can we do it, can we do it? Let's see. We did it, woo! I felt it right here though, sure enough. I felt it right here. Now it's got a little bit of air and it's been stretched a little, so I'm gonna let the air out, okay? That's a great sound <laughs> for TV. <laughs> let me now do it again. It's stretched a little, this will be a lot easier, I'm sure. Piece of cake. Second time, a whole lot easier, why? Because it's already stretched. And this is just a picture of you and I. Sometimes you've, you've been stretched once or twice, and it's like, oh yeah, no problem. And just as soon as we're stretched once or twice and do something and it's no problem, <laughs> sure enough, we get stretched again in some new project, some new endeavor. So this is just part of the process, isn't it? Just this idea of grace for the pace. The Lord, he's charging up our batteries. The Lord is helping us not be so saturated that we can't keep up with life, can't keep up with the things that are required of us. He helps us to spin more plates, juggle more balls as needed. Now, little wrap up thought, a couple parenthetical thoughts here. And that is this, and we've mentioned it before, but you know, sometimes we're the ones putting more pressure on ourselves than the Lord is. And so let me just, you know, give a couple of thoughts to that. There very well could be in your life, in the season you're in, it very well could be, you don't need a bigger container. You do need less salt. It very well could be, you don't need 14 ways to charge your phone. You just need to keep your, your phone battery charged, right? It very well could be, you just need to blow up the one balloon and call it good for now because you're putting more pressure on yourself than the Lord is. I remember, I do remember when our kids were little in that season, because that one's so vivid in my mind as a stress-filled season that I needed a lot of grace. And I do remember distinctly with the four little preschoolers pioneering the church that the Lord spoke to me in that season because I was putting more pressure on myself. I was feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to be the perfect pastor's wife and we have to have this church to be so successful and I've got to have you know perfect little pastor's kids who don't mess up. And I just put way, 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 way more pressure on myself than the Lord was. And one day God spoke to my heart and he said from Isaiah, he said that he, the Lord, gently leads those that are with young. And in my case, I had, we had young kids. 
And so he was like, I'm gently leading you. You're putting way more pressure on yourself than I am. You're expecting certain deadlines and certain demarcations to be met way, way before I'm expecting them. So like take some pressure off. Well, A, just enjoy being a mom. Just enjoy your four kids. This season, moms, you guys know this, but man, that season goes fast. You're not going to have them in preschool season forever. One day they're going to be in school and even away from you for many, many hours. So you're not going to have this season of going for walks in the neighborhood or if they're taking a nap, you lay down with them, read them a little book. I mean, you're not going to have that season forever. So the Lord gently leads those who are with young. So you moms of young ones, be encouraged, okay? Be encouraged in that. And yet at the very same time, if you have demands in your life and things you have to do, then there's grace. There's more battery power. There's a bigger container. You can blow up the balloon. There's more grace to increase your margin. Amen. Let me conclude with this, um, this scripture. This will, this will be your encouragement. Okay. And we'll pray this as we, as we wrap up. This is in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew or recharge their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Well, you know that verse. It's very, very familiar. But those who wait on the Lord, they're the ones that will get their batteries recharged. And, and you, again, you know this, but let me just encourage you. If you will just carve out some time to spend with the Lord, if you'll just get with the Lord, be a, be a Mary, not a Martha, and you, you know one word from God, right? Do you, do you know that feeling? You're reading your Bible, and just one scripture, one phrase in a verse ministers to you like warm oil, like honey to your spirit. Just one little phrase, you go, oh Lord, thank you, that encouraged me. That little encouragement there, it gives you grace. That little encouragement pumps up the charge on your battery. So I want to encourage you, you know, as we wrap up, those who wait on the Lord will recharge their strength. Spend some time with God. Spend some time reading his word in particular. Um, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, David said, Lord, revive me according to your word. Recharge me according to your word. And I don't know, something about it. God's word is the supercharger, y'all. God's word is this. God's word is the mother load battery. <laughs> the one that'll just give you all the charges that you need for everything you're called to do. And so spend some time with God, spend some time in the word and get recharged. All right. So that's it for today. I hope you've been encouraged and I hope you've been challenged in a good way and you've got some hope. Thanks for joining me for the basics with Beth. Can't wait to see you next time right here as we continue getting grace for the pace. Do you want to go deeper in your relationship with the Lord? Do you want to know more about what the Bible says about your life? Then we invite you to check out thebasicsuniversity.com, an online discipleship platform created by Beth Jones to help you get the basics and connect the dots so that the Bible comes alive and makes sense in your life. Every course offered inside the Basics University includes dynamic video teaching by Beth Jones and downloadable worksheets or ebooks to help you personalize the content for your own life. Courses inside the Basics University will help you to get the basics on topics like getting to know the Holy Spirit, living an inspired life of purpose, understanding God's plan for wealth and generosity, and more. In today's busy world, thebasicsuniversity.com allows you to access courses at your own pace, in your own space, 24-7, 365 days a year. So if you want to get the Bible basics, live the faith life, and do the eternal stuff, check out thebasicsuniversity.com to learn more and enroll today. Thanks for watching today's show. We hope this message helped you to get the basics, live the life, and do the stuff. Be sure to share this message with a friend who needs encouragement. For more of The Basics with Beth Jones or to watch this complete series on demand, visit thebasicswithbeth.tv.